to Crusader Kings 2. The War of Conquest continues. It is I, the Golden Joe Oblivion. We're back with our man King Aegon, the Scourge of Wrathtown. And last episode, I think we were still just waiting for our allies to crush Dorn. It's taken some time, but I think Dorn is, uh, I think they're, they're inevitably going to lose. They've got a lot of enemies they have to fight. And I think we're getting the better of them. We had a positive 5% war score, more than it was last time. And uh, Prince Nymor is now gone, died of a natural death. And Princess Diria is now leading the reins in Dorne. Now, a lot of people have been talking about who we're going to replace as lords of each of the regions of Westeros. And I kind of shared some of my insights. Um, however, a lot of people raised some really good questions, like what's going to happen to Dorne, and what's going to happen to the Vale in the North and the Iron Isles, and in all honesty, I hadn't considered it, considered too much about those. Generally, my modus operandi, as far as that stuff goes, is uh, when I have the title in hand, I look I look around the regions for loyal houses, that is, uh, uh, houses that have lords that have positive opinions of uh, our character, King Aegon, and I generally give it to them. Uh, I like to also give uh, honor to other houses that are more prominently well known. For example, in the Reach, I've been known of uh, I've been known to just give the uh, titles away to whoever, and uh, I've been overlooking who have I been over? I've been looking over House Florent, but where the fuck do they rule? I forget. Um, house Florent. I don't even know where they rule, but I, I, apparently they're the second most powerful house. I do. I am familiar, familiar with Laygood, but they're generally a pretty damn weak. Uh, Weak uh, house. Where, where are they? House Florent. That's Osgray. Uh, oh, Tarly. Tarly is pretty fucking popular too. I'm familiar with Tarly. Oh, and of course there's uh, there's High Tower. So th th there are a few, and, th and then there are the Tyrells. I don't know where the Tyrells are though. Oh, there they are. They're in Westbrook. I don't know where House Florent is. I'm stupid. I don't know where they are. Anyway, so uh, we're gonna have to make sure that we um. Honor the houses that are really, really popular. Anyway, so essentially what's going to happen is I want to see Oris rule the Stormlands. I don't believe we can turn him into House Baratheon. I don't know how to do that. The Crown Stag Sigil. I don't know how to... Uh, some people have been saying I uh, give the Stormlands to Oris and then legitimize him. And then he'll create the... <coughs> apologies. He'll create the uh, Baratheon, Baratheon house. But I'm kind of afraid he'll just turn it into a Targaryen. And then that will uh, murky the bloodline, the family. We can't have that. Uh, also, Oris cannot marry Argella because she always gets married to Sir Boris Cole for some reason. But I would love to see Oris rule the Stormlands, maybe maybe one day. Uh, in the West, it looks like we're going to be giving the Westerlands to House Rain. although I am a little worried about Lord Stefan's negative opinion of King Aegon, but I believe that will change, because he, he desires the King of the, of the Westerlands, and it, he is a legendary house, he does have a legendary bloodline, uh, they have a Valyrian sword, they have all the makings of the rulers of the West, and so they will we'll probably give it to them, I've had some people suggest the Bane Fort, and I probably would if they had their own bloodline and their own Valyrian weapon, but unfortunately they don't, the Bane Kings are no more, uh, now that'd be an interesting playthrough, restore the, uh, the Bane, the Kings, the Kings of the Bane at the Bane Fort. There's another house here, but I've, uh, I've forgotten. And, uh, yeah, we're just gonna move on. The Vale I hadn't really thought too much about. I was probably just gonna give it to keep it with House Aaron. What the fuck is this about? Subjugated, declared war, defeated me. Ah, right. Yeah, House Aaron. I don't know how, how loyal they're gonna be. How loyal they're gonna be. And I don't really know of many other, uh, houses here. Let's see, we've got Hunter, House Hunter. Oh, yeah, House Hunter. Yeah, I've never heard of them before. Um, House Moore. Again, I've never heard of them. House Belmore. That's new to me. Uh, house Lips. I have, I have heard of them before, but I don't like their house, in all honesty. Who rules G Gulltown? Grafton? I think uh, Runestone is House Royce. House Royce. Hmm. People suggested giving the veil to them, because they, they are an ancient house. What is this? Templeton. Who owns the Bloody Gate? Of course, House Aaron does. And Ruthrum. Okay, so we'll worry about that when we get to it. The Trident. We have the Trident, do we not? Kingdom of the Trident, we do. And, 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 we thought about giving that to the Tullys. I probably will give it to the Tullys just because Lord Edmund, that is who, uh, uh, lore-wise, Aegon made the lords of, uh, of the Riverlands. I think last episode, I had decided that we're going to give out the titles before the end of the war because p the, the vassals were getting kind of antsy. They were, they were asking us for titles and we had to keep refusing, which was pissing them off. So we might just have to, you know, fuck it, give it to them. And so I'm going to make the Tullys officially the Lords of, Lords of the Trident. 
This better not make them fucking independent. I looked to see if there's an option to convert it from a Kingdom tier to a Lord Paramount tier, but there wasn't anything there. I think it's automatically going to be subservient to the Seven Kingdoms uh, 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 title because that's considered an Empire title, even though it's called the Kingdom. So let's go ahead and give the Kingdom of the Trident to House Tully. All right, and they, of course, absolutely love us. I think, oh, we have too many held high lordships. All right, we gotta get rid of some of those. Um, I mean, our demean is okay, though. We can get three more things. We just can't have high lordships, because I think that's um, that's what's giving us a penalty, but just regular lordships we can keep. Uh, so this is gonna make House Tully, Lord Paramount, Edmund, the Able of the, of the Trident, they will be loyal from now on, excellent. We also have the Kingdom of the Westerlands, which we're going to give to House Rain. Actually, I can't because they're off fighting their own little war now, so they will have to wait. Um, we could give it to Sarsfield, even though I don't like Sarsfield. There is House Lefford. I like their I like their sigil, but I'm not crazy about the house themselves. And we've got House Plume. We have got House Prester, uh, and that's about it. I think that's about it. Yeah, the rest are all doing their own thing. Somebody said that House Broom had uh, aided us somehow. I don't recall. So we might give House Broom the High Lordship of Casterly Rock. We'll give them control of these four t uh, uh, counties right here. Let's get the time going. We also had... We also gave birth to a legendary... We gave birth to quite a few children. We have six now. Fuck yes. But we gave birth to twins, Prince Janix and the legendary Prince Caesarian, or Prince Caesar. And he, he will no doubt, no doubt be, he's going to play a very vital role in the future. You all will see. You all will see. Uh, the, the Dragon Brood, when they come of age, this is going to take, a, Caesar's going to play a paramount position in that. But I'm going to, I want that to be a little bit of a surprise when that, uh, how that all unf unfurls. Your bannerman, Lord Codwell Cod, is currently under threat from external enemies. Should we, 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 should we fulfill our kingly duty and aid them? Why? He's being attacked by Lord Edmund. Ah, he's bringing... Yes, he's bringing the Red Fork back into the Riverlands. And Lord Cadwell, ah, he will face judgment. It is my duty. He can cope. Let's see, this is going to piss a lot of people off. Failed to protect bannerman. Will join in his defensive wars. Excuse me? Defending against Lord Paramount Edmund. And apparently I'm obligated to help him, even though he's technically not my vassal. But if I say no, everyone gets pissed off at me. For 10 years? Are you fucking kidding me? I can see Prince Lorien is there, Lord Janos, Lord Gunser, Lord Robert. So I have to fight. Wait a minute. No, I don't. Okay, that was an odd. That was an odd bug. They said I had to fight for him, even though he wasn't my vassal, against another one who was actually my vassal. So the game had a little hiccup there. I'm not sure what's going on. Anyways, oh, nice. Yes. The blue, the red fork is back with... Oh, damn it. We can't imprison him? He's not in hiding. Oh, of course he would. Of course he would. Maybe we should plot to kidnap him, but then that would make us dishonorable. I don't think Aegon would do that. Well, whenever he comes out of hiding, he's going to find his way into a dungeon cell for the king. Anyways, as far as the game goes, I downloaded, either this morning or last night, the the, the most recent update for uh, uh, Game of Thrones 1.9.1. So we're going to install that. Hopefully, that fixes whatever problems I have, and I can actually start new games, and hopefully with new features as well. Because I have, I have series I want to start for CK2, a uh, Game of Thrones, but I can't. So once we get that fixed, once I figure that out, we can start... We, you guys can expect more Game of Thrones series uh, for CK2. I also downloaded um, another game and some Game of Thrones mods for that. And I talked a little bit about that in the last episode. So we've got that all installed. I'm going to have to test it all probably this Thursday because that's when I uh, have a day off from work. But we'll test that and we'll probably have more series from new games coming as well. Uh, I've arrived in Dragonstone. Excellent. We have more reinforcements, and the... Whoa, should we antagonize this guy anymore? I think we should. What is he doing? He wants to see Lady Neri of the Blue Fork dead. Oh, he's trying to kill his wife now. Fucking lunatic. Let's see. Gilanos. Ooh, Gilanos has been a leal and able servant. Is he my hand of the king? He is. And what a hand he is. Quick, charitable, temperate, trusting, honorable, good man. Let's see. I think this service warrants a grant of land. 
Mmm. I am considering it. This option is available due to, to your high intrigue skill. Is given a new house name and a coat of arms. If I just give him the twins, will his background become the twins? He's a Soci Valerian. He follows the Valerian gods. Do I want there to be Valerian worshippers in in uh, Westeros? Because I kind of wanted the Valerian worshippers to be predominantly here in in um, what is that? What, what the Dragonstone Sea? Although there are here at um, Claw Isle as well. I don't think it's going to be a problem. If I give him a title, though, I think he's not going to be my Hand of the King anymore. And you know what? He is good, but he's not legendary. So you know what? Let's give him a noble title. We will we will raise him to nobility, and if he does something extremely awesome, we'll give him land. But right now, we will give him a noble title, and his noble title is Nailembeer. Well, that's cute, because I'm never going to pronounce that name again, because it's hard to pronounce. Oh, new Lord Commander on the wall. Ah, Lord Commander, Lord the Open-Handed, the new Lord Commander of the wall. Good. I think they finally have... Oh, no, no, no. The Dornish armies are still intact, but we've... Uh, my allies have been doing a lot of good work against them. The Dornish are now marching out of Dorne. That's kind of... Kind of weird. As your working court physician Morgan bursts into your study, your grace, you've been up all night again. It would be in your best interest not to work so hard, lest you shall collapse from exhaustion. Perhaps you're right, I'll heed your advice. I lose diligent and I take it easy, which means I take minus one point in every stat, but I get plus one health for the next 30 years. Yeah, fuck that. We're not doing that. I don't even know why that's an event. That sucks. Do we really need to keep, um... Oh, yeah, we were swaying her because we sent her a gift. We sent her a gift, and my golly, was that worth it. All right. Cadwell Cod, is he out of hiding now? No. Can we imprison her? Nah. But he's still in hiding. He's going to be in hiding for, uh, end your plot. No. King, yes. You can't remain in hiding for long. Let's see. Vassal opinion, minus five. Diplomacy, minus five. Prestige, minus two. I will find you, Cadwell. I will find you, and I will cast down House Cod. Perhaps I should use my extensive military knowledge to impress Queen Vera. Let's see. This will use my Marshal. Marshal's 32. This will use Diplomacy, right? I guess we can talk strategy, although she might not be interested in that. Who knows? Maybe she is. We should probably be developing my dissertation on military matters. was very much appreciated. It seems Queen Vera thanked me for sharing my knowledge with her. How could she not? Excellent. Let's start developing Dragonstone here. Uh, we have a refuge. That's great. We've already been... Oh, we can't because fucking winter is here. Shit. We will have to wait. The dragons, Maraxes, and Beleriand the Black Dread appear to have become a mating pair. They often, they can often be seen flying together or curled about one another in the fields of Dragonstone. Excellent. Maraxi falls in love with Beleriand. Hopefully that makes more dragon eggs. Are there dragon eggs right now? Demand King's Landing? Nope, we're not going to do that. I think I look at that every fucking time I open this up. Where are the dragons? Let's see. Wild dragons. We've got Limigon who is in the Shadowlands. We've got Snow. We've got Asaval. Beleria. Okay, so we got four. Four here right now, and there are no dragon eggs, unfortunately. All right, that's fine. That's fine. And the dragon brood is coming together. Okay, so... Uh, Mar Marys. Marys. Okay. Um, so how are we going to do this? I want... I want to be the guardian for Marys. Oh, we can rename him, too. Yes, we can. Should we give him a cooler name? No, we'll keep it as it is right now. I hate his name, but we'll keep it right now because I don't really have an idea as for how to change it. Or what to change it to, I should say. I know how to change it, I just don't know what to change it to. And then I'm going to become the Guardian of Caesar. Now, if any of you are not, not satisfied with Caesar Caesarian, Caesarian, whatever... It, it is kind of a mouthful to pronounce. If any of you have a better idea for a Valyrian variant of the name Caesar, go ahead, leave it in the comment section. I'm very open to changing this. However, he will always be Caesar to me, and I want that to be his nickname. I want him to have a, his, his proper name to be Valyrian in origin. So, uh, ooh. Mm. Okay, I want this goddamn war to end, because I want to give out titles and stuff. We've got the crossing, so we need to give that to somebody. Um, today I was approached by my sister wife, Visenya. Apparently she is concerned about my health and thinks that I'm becoming too frail and thin. Uh, okay. 
Uh, if I keep eating so little, she says, I will soon no longer be able to wield a sword, pleasure a woman, or even just go out riding. Maybe I should eat a bit more. Listen to Vicenius advice and start eating more. Shut up, that's none of your business. <laughs> Dismiss her advice. I don't think we're getting gaunt and weak. Although we are getting older, though, and as you get older, you will waste away. If we become fat, I'm going to be very pissed. A wandering warrior has requested an audience. It appears as if the entire court is abuzz with stories of his exploits. This Athan the Bold is seemingly of great renown. He wishes to swear fealty to me, having heard of my relation to the legendary Aenar Targaryen. Okay. I truly am blessed by my blood. Fantastic. Who is this guy? Athan the Bold. Holy crap. He is a Valyrian, Westerosi Valyrian. He is a brilliant strategist, cavalry leader, flanker, direct leader, defender, formidable fighter. Jeez, this guy's a legend. Brave. Hell yes. Join our court of Grey Gallows. Oh, so he's he's of um, the Stepstones. Uh, he already ha that That's his house name, right? That's his house name. Interesting. Ethan the Bold. Well, you know, you're pretty damn good. Military-wise, martial-wise, let's go ahead and use you. Lord Balmain the Affable, you're out. You're fired. And Athan, if you can prove yourself in combat or war, um, yeah, you know, maybe we should um, reward him somehow. It has been quite some time since I regularly went out hunting or trained for combat. My body may no longer be what it used to be, but spending more time at home with my beautiful wife gives me all the happiness that I need. This is not the fate of a warrior. This option is due to your high personal combat skill. Put yourself to work. It may yield smaller results compared to a drastic change in diet, but at least you will not risk relapsing into your old habits. Gains the trait fat. I don't care. The only thing that matters to me is my family. Keep eating and potentially become fat. Gains the trait fat. So this is going to make us fat anyways. No, this is too much. I need a diet. Force yourself to change your dieting habits and get back into shape. Hard to diet. For how long? Uh, seven years? Jesus. Let's see. Jovial Patriarch. G uh, general Opinion plus three. Fertility plus five. Gains the trait fat. Your caring and kind attitude might earn you the love of your relatives. Yeah, but Aegon d didn't get fat, though. This is not the fate of a warrior. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's smaller results compared to a drastic change, but at least you will not re risk relapsing into your old habits. But it says we get fat anyways. But I kind of want to try it, though. Yep, we're fat. So what the fuck was the point of, uh, of putting ourselves to work? Too much eating and too little exercise have caught up with me and have gained fat. I blame you, Visenya. I blame you for this. Uh, Rainies now has cancer, poor lass. Vasenya was right. I feel a lot stronger and healthier since I took on my new diet. I am almost ashamed of the pathetic, shaking little creep I was not too long ago. I'll have to throw out my old clothes. Are you kidding? You're now a fat ass. What is this? Damn you. First you get your dragon killed, and now you've made your king fat. Vasenya. Ooh, I think she's, uh, I think she is sabotaging the dynasty. Anyways, it looks so with Rainies with, Rainies now has cancer. We're fat as shit. Visenya's killing her own dragons. We need to look on to the uh, to the next generation. Let's see, we've got Rey, who is 10. She's a lunatic and possessed. That's not good. Her sister, Princess Daenerys, is 6. Uh, the heir to the realm is uh, 4 years old, and he's a lunatic. I don't know. Maybe next year he'll get the, coin, the Targaryen coin toss, and this will get changed. But I doubt it. Um, the future is going to be in the, in the hands of Caesar and Janix, I believe, but they, they have a ways to go. They have a ways to go, so we, we need to hold out. We need to hold out and survive after being skillful. And we haven't even completed the conquest either. Jesus. Let's see. He's successfully treated uh, my wife's cancer. Uh, compensate him, I guess. But yes, w the war hasn't, the conquest hasn't even ended. My allies are struggling. Somehow they're struggling. I'm not sure why. Or how it's possible, but they are struggling. I'm maybe hopping on our dragon and burning Sunspear would be uh, would be something worthwhile, considering Aegon's getting fat sitting around at home. So you know what? That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get our ships together. We're not gonna raise all our levies, but we are gonna raise up these two thousand, and we're gonna make Aegon command it. Are we forbidden from command at the moment? Yes. Let's unforbid ourselves. Throw ourselves into this army here. Have command happen to us. We'll get on our dragon. Uh, I have decided that it might be profitable to take some time and resources and try to seriously hurt my sworn enemy. 
Lord Cadwell is an unbearable pestilence upon this world, and I will not rest until I will have until I will have made his life a living hell. Let's see. Well, we did. We. I thought we. Oh, he's broke as shit. Nice. I will spread false reports about him. No, let's spread vile rumors. Excellent. Excellent. We will punish him. All right. Now let's go sail on down to Sunspear. Pay the the Dornish a a visit. Is she leading troops? She's leading troops in in. Oh, she's she's out in the field. But we're going to go down to Sunspear, and we're going to melt their capital. Uh, Ray grows more beautiful every day. I had my doubts at first, but now I cannot deny any longer. The child is surely blessed. When my wife played during the festival, the goddess must have touched the child within her and gifted her with beauty and purity. Oh, when my wife played blank during the... Okay, okay. So Ray's mother is Visenya. You all remember when we made Visenya the... Uh, fertility goddess the avatar of the fertility goddess at that one one fucking festival it turns out that that was all worthwhile because now ray has somehow become magically more attractive i could never be happier uh gains 30 piety gains the trait attractive five percent chance of will be known as the heavenly oh come on that would have been an awesome title that would have been awesome. It's too bad that she's a fucking lunatic and she's possessed by demons. <laughs> she's a mad one, but she is beautiful. All right, the, the Dornish armies have left Dorne to go fight in the Stormlands, and we're going to go pay the capital a visit with our dragon because I want this goddamn war to end because, um, well, Aegon and his sisters, not doing that well. Not doing that well right now. Okay, blah, 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 stupid things the squids are doing. Uh, let's go to here. Oh, yeah, I, mean, I think I talked to somebody in the comments section of the last episode about what we're going to do with the Iron Isles, and I honestly don't know. I don't have any kind of plans for them. Uh, do I want the Greyjoys ruling it? No, I don't actually want anybody ruling the Iron Isles. I want them all to be subservient, but hmm, maybe we'll have to pick something for them. Somehow should rule them, I suppose. Wait a minute, is she back in Sunspear? <sighs> She's returned to Sunspear the same time we made her landing. Now's our chance. Deploy the dragon. Watch Balerion gets killed. Nope, didn't get killed. But we have... Oh, we have searched the dungeons at once. Release these people. Lord Jorah of Castle Kerwin. Release anyone with whom we have common cause. Release all prisoners. Yeah, I think we'll release them all. Nice. Your grace, we've rounded up everybody we can find in Sunspear. What should we do with them? Clap Princess Dirian Irons and leave the rest. You see, that's how it's done. My ally struggled for years to take Dorne, and then it takes one visit from Aegon, and we we captured Princess Daria of Dorne. Okay, I think, should we offer her terms? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Seize Valyrian Artifact. The Crown of Dorne. We don't need to do that. Apparently that's Valyrian. Curious. Uh, yes, let's offer terms. Offer her peace. And she has been conquered, and the Crown of Dorne has been added to our treasury. Excellent. Okay. A new kingdom. The quest is complete. I have taken the swords of a thousand defeated foes and forged a great throne with them using the dragon breath of Beleriand the Black Dread. It is a mighty throne. One which my followers are already calling the Iron Throne, but where shall it be placed? In the great city of Old Town? at Dragonstone, or maybe a great new seat for the Dragon Kings. It shall be, it, I shall build a new citadel for the Kings. Uh, Westeros changes name to moved preferred capital to Blackwater Bay. Establish the castle of King's Gate. The Royal Defense, uh, oh, the Royal Domain of the Crown Lands shall be made up of dra Dragonstone. Okay, so everything gets changed to how it's known essentially by the, uh, as it is known nowadays. It shall be at Dragonstone, our ancestral seat. Westeros changes name to blank. Move preferred capital to Dragonstone. Lose 150 gold. Castle of Dragonstone. Gain large Westeros Valyrian castle. Ooh. King Aegon, move capital to Dragonstone. The royal domain of the crown land shall be made up of Dragonstone. High lordship of blah, 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 blah. Old town shall be my seat. Ooh, that's curious. I don't think I've ever seen somebody rule Westeros from Old Town. But we're not going to put in Old Town. It is going to be in Dragonstone. Now, it says it says here, gain large Westerosi Valyrian castle. Don't we already have that here? Let me click on it, please. Let's see. Oh, god damn it. Move this shit. There we go. Common Westerosi castle. 
common Westerosi Valyrian castle. We, it would turn into a large one. Nice. Fuck yeah, let's do that. It should be a it should be a Dragonstone or ancestral seat. Large Westerosi castle. Now, how does that affect the garrison? What does that do to the garrison? Uh, two thousand men, eight hundred men. Uh, eight. Mm, that actually didn't do much in the way. It helped with the fort level a little bit. Tax income. Yeah. Hmm. Oh well. We still need to work on it. We still need to work on it. And no, we're not going to make a dragon pit. That's bad. Your feat of conquering the Seven Kingdoms of the Iron Throne means the bloodline of House Targaryen is now highly respected by the defeated peoples of your new domain. House Targaryen is now considered a traditional great house of the region. Fire and blood. Um, bloodline gains a traditional dynastic claim on the Seven Kingdoms. Bloodline gains a traditional di dynastic claim on the High Lordship of Dragonstone. I thought we already had that, but that's good that we get that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had it on the traditional claim on Dragonstone. Fire and Blood. So does that change now to include uh, the Seven Kingdoms? It should. It should now. All right. With the war over, we can disband our armies and return home. And then peace can at last come back to Westeros. And then we can begin working on uh, getting new Lord Paramounts. So the war should, the mega war should end eventually. The wars between the great powers of the Iron Throne have subsided for now. The war has ended. Do you wish to reappoint the old council? Uh, becomes master of oh, Lord Gunser becomes the master of laws. Oh, and Master Monfort of Durland becomes the master of whispers. No, we're not going to reappoint them. Oh wow, we got way too many vassals. Now, this is what I'm talking about. So, all of Westeros is now flying the colors of the Iron Throne, with the exception of a few people. The Gold Road. What are you doing? Defending against Lord Lyman of the Golden Tooth and Lyman's claim on Brent Brook War. Uh, can we command you to end your wars? No. Hey, command to end war. Send a letter to Lord Lyman Lefford commanding them to end a war. Due to the level, this will not be legally binding. Hmm. How about you, Atlanta? What are you doing? How dare you? How dare you remain independent? Cadwell. Bah. He has come out. He's come out of hiding. Hmm. Uh, it says we only have 46% chance of arresting him. Surely we can increase that, can we? Can we not? Suppress revolts. Where is the blue fork? There it is. So we will send uh, Oris along with a clutch of guards, and we will attempt to imprison Lord Cadwill, uh, our master of coin. Let's see if we can't get uh, somebody who is extremely good with the monies. And it seems we can't. Fuck. All right, we have to pick somebody. We have to pick somebody. We've got Lord Balman the Affable, who has 16 stewardship. So we will pick you, and you will collect taxes for us. Excellent. And, uh, yep, let's get our Storm Singer. Let's pick... Um, let's pick Ethan? No. Let's pick this this guy. We can perform charity or we can proselytize. Let's perform charity. Okay, got that settled. How about the minor titles? All oh, right, Warden of the South. We have to dole out titles. And before anything can fucking happen... House Rain! I hereby... I hereby declare House Rain to be... The new rulers of the Westerlands. Excellent. Thank you. Can I make you Warden of the West? While we're already at it. A word honorary title. Warden of the West and Shield of the West. Excellent. House Rain now rules the West. Um, as for House as as for Castley Rock, let's see, we can give the Ooh, we could give the High Lordship of Castley Rock to Sir Pres Presford of Fang Tower of House Parin. House Broom is being kind of, uh, desires the High Lordship of Casterly Rock. Oh, yeah, you know, somebody did say House Broom aided us, and I will have to take your word for it, so we will grant them instead the High Lordship of Casterly Rock. Excellent, that makes us, that makes them absolutely love us. What is their sigil here? Oh, it's just, okay, they're, excellent, that's fine, that's fine. Now, that should have fixed our problem with the High Lordships. We still have a question about what happens to the crossing. Who will get the crossing? Um, what, who, what is historically the High Lordship of the crossing? Okay, we've got House Charlton, we've got House Hay, and we have 
House Aaronford. Okay, Aaronford, they're kind of a small house. House Hay has a much larger house. And House Charlton has a uh, semi-decent house. Charlton, Hay, or Aaronford. Mmm, it's kind of a big, kind of a big deal. Kind of, big, I can't really give it to anyone else, like House Malister or anything, because that'll make their houses too large. Uh, I want to keep it within the um, High Lordship, so let's give it to Charlton. Let's see who is the most loyal. They have Lord John Jonos, who is twenty nine. We have Lord Walder. Well, he's all he's he's automatically disqualified because if your name is Walder, you can't uh, you can't rule the the crossing. I've just decided. And then Sir Stevron has minus 21. It's going to go to House Charlton. So I will grant you the crossing. I'll grant you the twins. Excellent. And then I will grant you the High Lordship of the Crossing. Congratulations. Fantastic. And they will love us forever. And then we have no more titles to give out. We do have, we do have certain uh, uh, honorary positions we have to give out. We have a Warden of the West. We need a Warden of the North. Which is going to be you, Lord Paramount Torin, even though I don't think you deserve it. But we need somebody as our Warden of the North. That historically is the ruler of the North. We've got a Warden of the West. Warden of the East. I'd love to make Oris. Let's see. Can we fabricate treason? Incite revolt. King Aegon wants to see Argalac Durandin, Lord Paramount Stormlands, at war with King Aegon. I'd prefer to fabricate treason. But that looks like it's going to be hard to do. Can I imprison him? No. Um, No. So, let's see if we can't... Ah, I don't trust him. Ulrus! Ulrus, can I make you? Can I make you my warden of the... No, I can't, because you're not a high lord. Not yet. What is this? Offer non-aggression pact. We don't really need that. We need to do something about this. We could... We could... It seems like we could incite him to revolt. And that is essentially is... We're tricking him into thinking that Aegon is intending on moving against Lord Paramount Argilac. So he's going to revolt. And then and then that revolt will give us reason enough to take away the Stormlands from him. And then we can give it to Oris. However, it does risk breaking up the kingdom. And that could lead to further... Um, further... It could, it could lead to little individual wars like the Gold Road is fighting here. Which is why they're kind of independent. Why Etranta and Arendelle are independent at the moment is beyond me. They, they're probably fighting or doing something. So let's just fabricate treason. I know this can still lead to, to, to a, a revolt anytime we attempt to arrest a vassal, especially a very powerful vassal. There's always the chance that they can revolt and fight back. But I would, I would much rather do it this way. I would rather have the chance of us being able to imprison him first than essentially having to absolutely go to war with him. So we're going to plot, and we're going to invite everybody, everybody that we can, and then we'll, we'll turn people to our cause if we can. Um, something else that's important is we need to request a coronation. Enacting this decision will result in a request to the High Septon for a coronation ceremony to be held in the Great Sept of the Faith in honor of King Aegon. This will allow King Aegon to become crowned and blessed by the Faith and extend your authority to the, as the ruler of the Seven Kingdoms, which further legitimizes your rule. He might disagree, though. The High Septon might say no because we're not actually a Faith of the Seven. I've expressed my wishes and desires for coronation at the Temple of the Gods to Sir Stormsinger Monford. Oh, okay. Hopefully, he will accept my request so that I can begin inviting my lords to attend the coronation ceremony. Oh, yes, it'll be a big feast. To his to to his most holy grace, King Aegon, first of his name, in the name of the gods, I, I Stormsinger Monford, would like to offer you my blessings. Ah, yes, he is. He's our Stormsinger, so of course he's going to say yes. All right, and we will hold a great feast where only the most loyal of vassals will join us. I have no words for such dishonor. You all, you bastards, you're all traitors. You are all traitors, and we will see you replaced. All right, so we're getting a coronation. We probably should establish a king's guard as well. Shall be found out. You shall select your first member. A vacancy has become available in a king's guard. Seven swords must guard the king. You must choose a replacement. Great. Um, I can't be bothered right now. I would much rather like to um, give my own. What is this? Arrange a betrothal. No! Decline! Uh, Alright, search the realm, any. And let's pick men. Uh, hopefully not in prison. Hopefully not married. Rulers, yes, ideally. And I want fighters. So let's start with formidable. Oh, there are no formidable fighters. How about skilled, if I can fucking spell without looking at my keyboard. Skilled fighter. 
Now then, let's look at age, because I'd like them to be in my King's Guard for some time. So we've got Lord Boros of Antlers, the Lord of Buckwell. Well, I don't know. Are they supposed to be lords? I'm not sure. Um, appoint commander. Why can't I give somebody my... Add someone to my King's Guard. Where, where is that option? I don't have that option now. Did they change how that's done? I'm not certain. King's Guard, yes, King's Guard, King's Justice, bodyguards. Uh, apparently, I have bodyguards. Quentin, Coharis, appoint to King's Guard. There it is, there it is. So, are they supposed to be unlanded? I'm not sure. Appoint commander. Legalize House House Baratheon. Oh, it says legalize House, legitimize House Baratheon. Ah, okay, so maybe we can make House Baratheon. Is currently considering invite to plot. Um, so, so okay, so let's go to let's go to no ruler ruler any or better yet let's do the ruler no. Okay, ruler no. Uh oh, there's lots of unlanded people. Hopefully not the age of twelve. 16, skilled fighter, Josart, Corcher in Kingsgrove. He's of the old gods, but let's see if we can even appoint him. We can't appoint him. What the fuck? Um, this says search realm. These are Northmen, though. Can I appoint, can I appoint you as a part of my Kingsguard? I can. Interesting. Okay, so we got Bertrand. He's a bodyguard already. And he's lustful. He probably will say no. And he's a, and he's a fucking trained fighter. Uh, I imagine the first person we hire is going to be is going to be probably the the the, the commander. So let's let me double check to see if formidable. Fi ah, we do have some formidable fighters. All right, we have some formidable fighters. Excellent. And according to age, Marins is of House Will. Oh, that's cool. It's a, it's, it's a foot stepping on a snake, and the snake is biting the foot. That's fucking cool. Minus 42. Lord, faith, authority, zealous, foreign religion. Yeah, that's going to be a thing. S Holy crap. Ethan. Ethan, appoint to King's God. I would like you to be the commander of my personal bodyguard. The King's Guard needs seven members. Offer a spare place amongst... Let's see if he accepts. Lord Commander. Lord Commander Ethan, excellent. He is the first. Your grace, he says, it would be the highest honor to serve in your king's guard. Lord Commander Ethan the Bode. He is commander of the king's guard. Let's make him a character of special interest. I like to know who my, my, my king's guard is over here because there's not really any quick way to look to see who are your seven swords. And so this makes it a lot easier for us. Ethan is the first, so he's the commander. Now we need more people, but I want people who I can trust. We've got Tycho Volantin. He is a Bravosi. Curious. He is a foreigner, but then again, we kind of are foreigners too. Um, are we going to take negatives if we appoint a foreigner? Let's see. Let's see. Your grace, it would be the highest honor to serve in the king's god. Let's see. Gain 100 prestige. Tycho gets happy. Tycho Valentine joins Lord Commander Ethan the Bold. Uh, your faith of the seven vassals may be upset at you for appointing a moon singer's king's guard. Your home and andal vassals may be upset at you for appointing a Bravosi. Yeah, you know, maybe. Maybe, but he is a he's a good man. Willem, I'd invite you, but you have the bloody flux. Uh, we've got oh, we've got Warren, a salt Dornish. I think some people are gonna be upset about appointing him as well, but we need as many formidable fi oh, you know what? Before I do anything else. We need to appoint you to the special interest group. And then we've got Warren. I want as many formidable fighters as possible. Uh, your grace would be the highest honor to serve in the King's Guard. I know they're going to be upset because, ooh, you appointed a Dornish man to the King's Guard. Sir Arthur Dane was a damn Dornish man, and he was one of the greatest legendary swords fighters of all times. So, fuck you people. <laughs> fuck those guys. All right, so I think we've got everybody we can have. Maybe. You're a bodyguard, but you're also a slave. That's curious. There's lots of slaves here. Um. Okay, this is still being done by age, right? Diplomatic range, yes. Okay. I don't know if I want wildlings to be in my king's guard. 
Um, we've got John the Sworn Shield. I cannot appoint you because you're a part of someone else's kingdom. Can't appoint you. Ironborn can't appoint you. Veilman, Volantine, Larathi, Salt Dornish, Riverman. You are a slave. What? Where? Where? Are, where? Oh, okay. All right, this isn't working. It has to be within the realm. So we're gonna change this from formidable now. So we've got three P three King's Guards that are formidable guards. We will have rest their skilled fighters. This is still done by age. Yes, I also want young men. I want young men so that they'll be my bodyguards for longer. We've got a North man, Josart, who we cannot inv we can't uh, extend an invitation of King's Guard to him because he might. I think because he is a. Oh, we can't uh, we can't do him either. Is it because they have to be in my court? Jonos, Prince Jonos, appoint to King's Guard. I don't think this is gonna work. His heir is Prince Jonos of the Mountain Vale. He has cancer, Lord Paramount Ronald, and Prince Jonos. Let's, I mean, let's. He might disagree. He might disagree, but let's appoint him. Let's let's offer it to him. Uh, I fear I would make a poor King's Guard. I bid you seek someone more worthy. Ah, fair. Oh, he is Craven. Fair enough. Fair enough. And plus, he stands to inherit the mountain and veil. So, whatever. Let's see if we can't find Gawain. I don't trust him. Vickery. Ah, uh, you're just a trained. I would pick Peter, but he's kind of he's kind of stupid, so we can't pick him. How about Corwin? Corwin, Commander of Fellwood. It would be the highest honor to serve the King's God. Excellent. We welcome you, Sir Corwin Fell. We welcome you. Uh, Corwin, we have Lucian, Courtier in uh, Martlet Bay, right? Martlet Bay, he's possessed. Oh, we don't want him. We don't want him. Medgar. All right, Medgar. How would you like to... Oh, no, you're a Northman. We can't invite you. Can't invite you. Uh, who do we ha We have... Sir Mears? Sir Myras? Sir, Sir Myers. Sir Myers. All right, and you're commander. Let's appoint you to the King's Guard. Uh, and he accepts. Excellent. So, how many people is that now? We got one, two, three, four, five. We need two more. Two more. How about Sam Good? Oh, I like that name. Sam Good. You'd be the highest honor. And they're skilled fighters, too, so they should be fucking good. That's six. And we need a seventh. Roland. Roland, you are Lady of Spears. Is that great? Are you a fucking Unsullied? He's a fucking Unsullied. He's a clawman that somehow became Unsullied. The great goddess of the Unsullied is called by many names, including the Lady of Spears, the Bride of Battle, and the Mother of Hosts. Her true name belongs only to, only to the ones who have burned their manhoods upon her altar. Ooh. Um, do we want this? I mean, he's not technically a foreigner. He is Unsullied, though. And he's a skilled fighter. Personal combat, commander, skilled fighter. How would you like to be a part of the King's God? It would be the highest honor to serve. Excellent. Might upset some people, but we now have seven men protecting the king. Protecting the crown. And I think we've doled out. Sir Corwin's father, Lord Rickard Fell, looked on with pride as the newest knight of the King's Guard swore his vows. Excellent. Good. Uh, the best part about preparing a feast. All right, we're going to spend lavishly on the stuff. I think we're going to end the episode here because we have a good amount of time for this episode. We've finished the War for Dorne. We've solidified our control of Westeros. We're currently having a coronation. We've established our King's Guard. And we've doled out titles in meaningful ways. Uh, the only downside now going forward is Aegon's health is kind of sliding and Rhaenys has cancer. Rainies is kind of replaceable. I don't want to lose her, but she is kind of replaceable. We just have to find more High Valyrian wives. Not that they're in, not they're in great supply, but that's what we would have. We would just replace her with another wife. But King Aegon's health himself is kind of dwindling. He's becoming quite fat because he took the advice, unfortunately, of his saboteur wife Visenya. And, but we must look forward to the next generation, the children, the dragon brood of the Conqueror, and I think it looks pretty promising. Ray, Ray, Princess Ray, and Princess Daenerys. I'm not expecting a whole lot to happen with them. I think we have three daughters. We have three sons. We can, uh, we can betroth them all. Okay, so they all have wives. Um, although I think, I think I would want either the heir or the uh, child of destiny, Caesar, to have the most wives. Uh, our actual heir himself is not looking too good. He's a lunatic already. He hasn't gotten... He hasn't gotten the, um... When is his birthday? First moon? 
he hasn't gotten the Targaryen coin flip yet. Let's actually continue on until he does get the coin flip, and we'll see what he gets. Uh, what the fuck does this asshole want? He wants to arrange a marriage between Sir Artis Aaron and Rosalind Frey. And he wants my permission to do so. F sure. I don't care, in all honesty. I just want to get the, tar the, the the Targaryen coin flip for Prince Marys. Maybe, maybe he can be redeemed. I don't know. But I am looking forward to see the progress of Prince Caesar. However, Prince Caesar is the second son. He doesn't stand to inherit anything. But... A child as ambitious as Caesar might not, uh, he, he might not sit on his laurels. He might not be content with being the second son. The Lords of the Realm have started, started arriving in Dragonstone. Yes, we're having the ceremony in Dragonstone. Fuck Old Town. Uh, welcome all. Oh, also, we're plotting to fabricate, not fabricate treason. Oh, we are trying to fabricate evidence. Ah, yes, we're trying to essentially uh, 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 drum up support so that we can justify arresting Argalak and taking the Stormlands away from him so we can give it to a more loyal house. Can I legitimize Aurus now? Can I legitimize him now? Maybe? Legitimize House Baratheon. King Aegon is the last living member of House Targaryen who can inherit titles. Okay. Is not one of these must be true. King Aegon is the last living member of House Targary Targaryen who can inherit titles. Okay, it's kind of odd. Welcome all. Targaryen coin flip, where is it? All right, it's okay, so it's not on his fifth name day, but it, it, I'm pretty sure it happens sometime around the year, the, the, the fifth year. Uh, Mr. Morgan spoke up and he liked the stuff. Great. Lord Paramount Stefan Rain has used his attendance of the feast in Dragonstone to present a petition for justice. He claims that raiders under the command, the command of Lord Theon Drum, have been raiding and looting his lands. Uh, Lord Theon the Milk Drinker. This seems reasonable. Have him arrested. How dare he! He has evaded capture and is refusing to come to Dragonstone to answer for his crimes. He's now raised his banners in rebellion. Lord Paramount Vicon Greyjoy will be sent to quash this uprising. Dealing with Liege's rebellion. We pay him. Declares war. Alright. <laughs> I like that. Vicon Greyjoy, Lord Paramount of the Iron Isles, is now dealing with my rebellion. Don't worry, Vicon. House Greyjoy will, uh, they'll see justice in no time. As the, f and, I, and I mean we're gonna fucking replace him, that's that's what that means. As the feast begins, Lord John Rosby presented a petition. He says that crime and in Rosby is an increasing threat, and the local sheriffs cannot contain the problem. I will send Lord Ulrus to deal with it. Lord Ulrus organized a group of men and tackled the bandits. Excellent. Uh, Lord Janos Charlton has used his attendance at the feast. He claims that Lord Balman Cave made an attempt on his life and demands that he's brought to justice for attempted murder. That's Lord Janos, Lord Balman the Affable. Oh god, he's our master of coin. And he is dishonorable. He's clearly not guilty. I don't want to lose the just trait, and he is dishonorable, so Lord Balman probably has been attempting to murder people. So we will bring him, uh, 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 we will bring him before the court. The men sent to Crackle Baron to arrest Lord Bellman Cave were unable to get past his guards. Lord Bellman saw the fertility in resisting, however, and has surrendered himself to your custody. Yeah, you know, Bellman, it's okay. You might not be found guilty. And Aegon has, hasn't been known for executing people who have been found guilty. Uh, he, he often sends them to the wall. So maybe, Lord Bellman, you'll be uh, you'll be spared. Sir Addison Marbrand, uh, he claims that Lord Ossifer Marbrand sullied his honor by having illicit relations with his wife. Lord Ossifer Marbrand is indeed adulterer. Hmm. He, um, is this really worth arresting for? Just have him pay recompense. Make him pay recompense. Alright, my prisoner Bellman Cave is complaining about himself. Very well, we shall be merciful. Let's call him for a tro uh Let's call him for a Oh, we can't. He's already considered guilty. Can we take his title? No. Uh, can we exile him? Since you have a valid reason, no one will care. Can we send him to the wall? Apparently, he's already guilty, so we'll just exile him to the wall, and his son will inherit his lands. Crowning of the king in the name of the gods, I, Aegon of the House Targaryen, the first of my name, promise, pledge, and guarantee in the sight of the gods that I'll be with the protector and defender of the realm and always useful to it, however many, and so far as I'm supported by divine assistance according to my knowledge and ability. Today, I was crowned by King Aegon and formally received the title of King of the Andals, the Royal of the First Man, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms, and Protector of the Realm. This will strengthen my rule significantly. Okay, and I got the double up messages there. And we are officially... Oh. What? Uh, consternation, he enjoys commanding your armies. And my lord, you make a good point. Yes, we will make Lord Paramount Stefan the new commander. Excellent. So we didn't get our little Targaryen coin flip, but we are now officially...
officially, officially recognized as King of the Seven Kingdoms. Uh, for, for, for most people, or on behalf of the bank to express my custody of the action of your bannerman, Lord Robar Wainwood. I shall pay interest on his... Uh, let, let's just pl let's placate him with the diplomacy. All right, well, in the next episode, I guess we're going to get our little Targaryen coin toss uh, uh, for Prince Maerys. Hopefully, it benefits him. It might not. It could make things worse, but we won't know. That will have to happen in the next episode. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe as always. This has been Crusader Kings 2, The War of Conquest. I have been the Golden Joe Oblivion. And until next time, I will see you all later.